Hi, thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar. I'm Kathy Leaker, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit about Starfish and how faculty can get involved and use Starfish to help students succeed. In this presentation, I'll be covering the following points. I'll explain a little bit about the core philosophy of Starfish and how it was designed. I'll explain why KCC has decided to implement Starfish, some of the long and short-term benefits we expect, what your role will be, and the resources and support we're providing, including additional webinars. First, I'd like to explain what Starfish actually is. It is not, in fact, a creature from the sea. Instead, Starfish is an integrated communication and workflow platform. It's based on what we know about student success. Students are successful when faculty, staff, and advisors can work together to provide optimal support for each student. Starfish's communication and workflow tools facilitate this kind of collaboration. At KCC, different entities each help students in their own way, often with some success. But even when a particular interaction or individual is effective on their own terms, that interaction often functions as an endpoint for the student, ultimately leaving him or her isolated when the next problem or issue erupts. Just as problematically, faculty and staff are left without valuable information that might support even more effective response. Finally, data regarding interventions is siloed, preventing us as an institution from gaining a broader understanding of what interventions work best for whom. We need a way to streamline communication, ensuring that the right people have the right information and can take the right action at the right time. Starfish can help us do this. Let's take a look at how. As we said earlier, students are most successful when multiple people on campus can collaborate to support them. In Starfish terms, those people become part of a student's success network. Let me show you how this works. This slide explains what such network collaboration looks like. Professor Taras is concerned about her student, Rachel, as she hasn't been coming to class. Professor Taras goes into Starfish and raises an attendance flag for Rachel. This generates notifications to both Rachel and her academic advisor, Yasmin Gold. Yasmin reaches out to Rachel regarding the flag. The two of them discuss Rachel's attendance habits and Yasmin gives her some actions to take to remedy the issue. Yasmin documents the results of her outreach in Starfish. Now that she and Rachel have adequately addressed Professor Taurus's concern, Yasmin clears the flag and closes the loop by informing Professor Taras of Rachel's intended steps towards addressing the attendance problem. This is a kind of complicated slide, but its point is that, as a system, Starfish is designed to generate long-term benefits through supporting short-term goals. The short-term goals are links to rates of end-user adoption, transactions, and follow-through. Fundamentally, faculty and staff must first adopt the system and use it for key functions in order for Starfish to have a measurable impact on the larger institutional goals. Specific processes like completing progress reports, raising flags, and closing the loop generate data that can then be used to improve processes which will in turn drive larger outcomes. So for example, if our larger goal is to increase early enrollment, then we'll benefit from a workflow that allows advisors to reach out to students with targeted registration guidance at the optimal time, and that flag students who haven't registered. If we want to increase course completion rates, Starfish data can help us configure a workflow that gives advisors the information they need to reach out to struggling students at the optimal time in the term. This slide just gives me one more opportunity to say again that any short or long-term impact of Starfish depends upon the number and comfort of its users. That is to say, you. If a professor raises a flag and neither the advisor nor the student see it or act on it, the professor's effort is wasted. If faculty don't respond to progress reports, advisors can't follow up on students who might benefit from additional support. Likewise, if we don't design a system that is intuitive and user-friendly, that meets the needs of students, faculty, and staff, then starfish might as well be a sea creature lying dormant at the bottom of the ocean.
Now that we've had a little look at Starfish, what it is and what it can do, I want to briefly explain how we're piloting it here at KCC in spring 2019. We're piloting it only with ASAP students. We selected ASAP because they already have a system of case management and progress reporting. Since they had these mechanisms in place, it was simply a matter of introducing and configuring the Starfish tool rather than implementing both the tool and the processes. So our goals for the pilot are to use Starfish to identify students with potential hurdles that might impact their success at KCC, to connect those ASAP students advisors and faculty within a shared communication channel, and to develop a communication flow linking the ASAP students to appropriate support services like tutoring, single stop, academic advising, and counseling. The team leading the Starfish pilot in spring 2019 at KCC include Joanne Russell and Peter Cohen, who are providing senior staff leadership. The pilot population will be ASAP students, the users will be ASAP advisors, faculty teaching ASAP students, and the ASAP students themselves. If you as a faculty member need support, you can consult the help desk. Primarily, the help desk will be there to help you with login, but you can also consult KCEL if you have larger questions about the purpose of Starfish and when and how you should use a particular tool. Finally, I, Kathy Leaker, and Loretta Brancaccio Terras are your faculty liaisons. Feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions. I want to just offer a quick note about next steps. Most importantly, we'll be gathering data from the pilot, and here again, we'll be relying on you. We'll be tracking how many people use Starfish, how many faculty raised flags, and the kinds of flags they raised and how many faculty completed the progress reports. And you'll be hearing more about those tools in our next webinar. We'll be looking at the workflow. Did we design it correctly? Did the right people get the right messages? And we're considering sending out a faculty, student, and advisor experience survey. How easy was the tool to use? Were you able to communicate what you wanted to communicate? Did you get the feedback you were hoping to get? Based on this data, We'll continue to work on Starfish, continue configuring it, and we'll be implementing it college-wide in fall 2019. Finally, we'll be working with other CUNY community colleges about the best uses of Starfish, their experiences using Starfish, and how we can all use the tool to support students and faculty. But I can't let you sign off without making a plug for these additional Starfish how-to webinars. On the same page, you'll find links to how to log on to Starfish, how to raise a flag, which means notify an advisor about a concern, and how to complete a progress report. Again, I thank you for taking the time to listen, and we want to hear from you, so don't hesitate to email me if you have questions or concerns.